Good evening. My name is Briston PV and I am a sophomore criminal justice major. And today in this video, I'm just going to basically just share about the town hall meeting question what was asked to President Trump. Starting with what has been the most difficult part of his presidency and what has he learned from it? His response was, Without question, I would say, because things were going so well, I think I have to say the whole COVID, the China virus, as I call it, because it comes from China. I think it's a much more accurate term, Trump said, but it's been very difficult. It's been so sad. Trump revealed he's known six people who have died from COVID-19. I learned that life is very fragile because these were strong people and all of a sudden they were dead. They were gone. And it wasn't their fault. It was the fault of a country that could have stopped it, Trump added, continuing to place blame on China. Um, he said some more things, but to not make the video longer, I'm going to go into the next question where, you know, he asked somebody that. It was a woman who said she immigrated from the Dominican Republic and lives in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And she shared with Trump that her mother died from breast cancer last month, but had a dream to become a citizen and vote. And she said she was there at the um, town hall meeting because of her. And um, she said, we lost our jobs, but we learned how to love our families. I'm saying that for her, she added other pandemic. And then her question was, what she's going to improve about the country's path to citizenship? And his response was we are doing something with immigration that I think is going to be very strong because we want people to come into our country, people like you and like your mother, and that just shows how vicious the COVID is, especially when you have another problem. You have a heart problem or another type of problem. And it's a very sad story, Trump said, not appearing to understand her mother had not died from the coronavirus, but from cancer. And I'm going to stop right there for that question. And um, another question from Alexander J. Floyd of Dallas, Pennsylvania, who says he voted for Trump in 2016. He asked the president how he can balance common sense police reform without sacrificing public safety. And Trump said... The Democrats are viewing this as a political issue, and I probably agree with them. I think it's very bad for them because we're about law and order. We have to be about law and order, otherwise you're going to see your cities burn, and that's the way it is. If we can do a plan like Tim Scott's plan, which is really, it goes far enough, but it doesn't take the dignity away from our police, Trump said. And you know, again, he added more things. But um, the next question uh, was asked by, it says, Stephen Opolis, how he responds to former top. The question was how he responds to former top military advisors in his administration, like former defense secretary James Mattis and former national security advisor John Bolton, who have each publicly said he's unfit for office. Trump painted them as, disgruntled employees. He said, Mattis was a highly overrated general. He didn't do the job. He didn't do good on ISIS. Trump said, continuing to insist he fired Mattis, though Mattis says he resigned, John Bolton, all he wanted to do is blow people up. Trump also said, Americans deploying to the Middle East has been the worst decision in the history of our country, and he's working to move more troops out. Um, another question was asked by Jim Rodesky of Iron, Pennsylvania, who voted for Trump in 2016 as well. Asked the president if he would do anything differently in the second term to create a more unified message as critics argue Trump can be unpresidential. And what he responded with was, he said, so I'm fighting a battle. It's a big battlefield and I have a lot of forces against me, Trump said. Sometimes you don't have time to be totally, as you would say, presidential. You have to get things done. And, and it just goes on and say Trump really got mad, you know, 
And I'm gonna do two more questions since my video is already five minutes long. It start with the lady name is Alicia Blake, an assistant professor from Philadelphia who says she voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016 and suffers from a disease called sarcotic sarcoidosis. Ask Trump what he's going to do about people like her with pre-existing conditions as he challenges Obamacare in court without having presented a replacement health care plan. He said, we're not going to hurt pre-existing conditions. And in fact, just the opposite, Trump said, before falsely claiming Democrats will get rid of protection for pre-existing conditions or take on socialized medicine, although Biden has said he would not support Medicare for all, we're going to be doing a health care plan very strongly and protect people with pre-existing conditions. He continued, before Stephen Nopolis pointed out he still has not presented the plan his first term as president, Trump went on to emphasize how he get, got rid of Obama's care, individual mandate, a financial penalty for not having medical insurance, and claimed that he has other alternatives to Obamacare that are 50% less expensive and that are actually better. It's been three and a half years, Stephen Polis said. And then Trump replied with, George, it's been 40 years since you had good health care. And then, you know, basically, yeah, it went on to the next question. And my last question is going to be from Pastor Carday of Philadelphia, a black man who says he voted for Jill Stein in 2016. Challenge Trump ubiquitous campaign slogan, make America great again, in light of a long history of systematic racism and housing and criminal justice. And Trump said, because you say again, we need to see when was the great, because that pushes us back to the time in which we cannot identify with such greatness, he asked. You said everything else about choking and everything else, but you have yet to address the knowledge that there has been a race problem in America. Oh, that come from Pastor Carr Day. He's still speaking. He also, and Trump replied with, I hope there's not a race problem. I can tell you there's none with me because I have great respect for all races. For everybody, this country is great because of it. And, you know, he got asked many, many questions, but I'm going to stop right there. And... I want to just add a few more comments about the town hall meeting questions and what I read. Okay, from President Trump. And I mean, from, from my eyes, yeah, President Trump got to go. And I know that, was, that wasn't necessary to say, but President Trump, he did his years. It's just time to get going. But um, I'm going to stop right here for now. And just thank you guys for listening to me. All right. Y'all have a good night.